You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. The Rugby World Cup is now just days away. The opening match between France and New Zealand at the National Stadium, Stade de France, just north of Paris. Paris Deputy Mayor Pierre Rabadam had a long and distinguished career with Stade Francais Paris and also played for the French national side. He joins us now, Pierre. Bonjour. Thank you for joining us. Bonjour. Hi. How, how much excitement is there ahead of the Rugby World Cup? It's now just a few days away. Yeah, it's starting in uh, five days finally, uh, after a long, uh, long years waiting. Uh, since uh, 2007, we didn't organize the World Cup, so we are really exciting for um and uh we i think we, we will be ready uh at least uh, in paris for sure with a massive uh, fan zone we will have in the place de la concorde and uh, we will expecting uh, everyone is expecting for the opening game uh, between france and, and the all blacks so that's maybe the the best game we can imagine for for the opening uh, world cup Tell us about the fan zone at uh, Place de la Concorde. Uh, it, it, what, I mean, how many people are you expecting there for the opening game, and, and what sort of activities are planned for the fan zone? Yeah, um, maybe I can start by saying that is the the most ambitious fan zone for rugby we ever created. Uh, we are in the Place de la Concorde, the I- I- iconic place of Paris, and uh, we were waiting uh, for the opening game. Uh, around uh, 4000 uh, people uh, watching the game uh, for uh, yeah uh, for 40000 so sorry, sorry. Uh, we we will do it again so uh, we 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 will waiting for a, a little bit less than uh, 40000 people uh, but we we have two capacity a uh, normal one if i can say around 15000 uh, and uh, for the opening game and uh, for the f- uh, final phases, uh, starting off in the quarterfinal, if uh, the French are qualified, uh, we will uh, will be around uh, uh, forty thousand. So, so that's going to be massive. It, it's uh, a capacity of the of a stadium, something it's like that. Absolutely incredible. I can only imagine the atmosphere there. As uh, as the All Blacks take on France in the opening match, and who knows, Pierre, maybe in the final as well. I guess we'll keep our, our fingers crossed for that. Just on yeah. on Le Bleu, uh, how do you assess their um, their form heading into the Rugby World Cup? How do you assess their chances of winning it for the very first time? Well, we can we we almost won sometimes in the couple of years before, especially against New Zealand in the uh, 2011, uh, but. Uh, uh, we missed it, so so I think we made a maybe one of the best preparation uh, we had. Uh, and I'm not speaking uh, only about uh, the the last games, but the last three years maybe. So uh, we had a quality uh, play of player uh, everywhere. Even if we lose some uh, important player in a couple of weeks before, but I think uh, we are able to win it. Maybe we had the, the best preparation we can imagine now, but the competition is really different. And uh, you know that in New Zealand especially, because uh, uh, you had a, a great experience in that way. But uh, no, I, I think that this generation uh, is ready to win something important. You know, uh, they, they win the 120 uh, w- um, uh, World uh, Championship. Uh, for three times in a row, I think. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this generation is really special, talented for sure. But uh, you know, maybe ready in mind, uh, and they they need to be because uh, if when you organize the World Cup at home, it's a, a really biggest pressure. Uh, but uh, I, I'm confident, but I know that everything is different during a World Cup. So, so maybe f- first test. Uh, could be maybe uh, the better things you can have for coming for uh, entering uh, in the in the competition, and and after that we we gonna see uh, if if uh, after the All Black game may, maybe it's not the the best the, the best way to to beat the All Blacks at the first game, uh, but because uh, uh, if if you want the, the, to win the final, uh, but we, we're gonna see we're, we're really exciting for waiting that game. 
Absolutely, as are we. Um, Fabian Gaultier, coach of Le Bleu, I know he's a man you're familiar with from your playing days. Um, yeah. what, what sort of coach is he? Can you tell us a bit about, about him and, and how he motivates his players? Yeah, I, I know him very well because I played with him firstly and he was my coach for five years, I think. So I know I know him really well, even if I can say that he, he may be Change a lot since uh, those time, but um, it's a clever and intelligent person. Uh, I think uh, he really made the exercise to understand how the high level of rugby is functioning actually, and the evolution of rugby. He's really he's really thinking a lot uh, every day about it. He's a technical, uh, a really good technical person on, on the rugby side. Uh, and uh, he made the effort to to create an environment, uh, a high level environment for players, uh, with a massive staff. And uh, he, he he was able to to take different person with him. So complementary staff we have actually. And as I as I tell you before, he had the chance and the opportunity to have um, an incredible player actually. Uh, and uh, but but he pushed them. He pushed them to go to to the best, and uh, and uh, that's what I'm, I'm I, I told you before. I, I think this generation is different uh, than our my generation and our, our the generation before, and uh, maybe they are really uh, ready more than we are uh, to to being able to win the massive competition at the World Cup. So. So we're gonna see that and it's easy to say before. Now they have to do the hardest things to, to win. But uh I think they, they may do the good way, they take the good way for for, for the uh, better preparation they're able to do. Pierre, the the sport of rugby in Paris, uh, how popular is rugby in, in your city compared to you know other parts of France? Uh it's uh sports it's uh, really easy. Specific side in Paris because uh, uh, when I when I used to play we we, we will be able to we were able to to uh, go to uh, five or six time in the Stade de France and have a full stadium during a regular season uh, and uh, now sometimes it's hard to have a full stadium around uh, just uh, twenty thousand of person it's it's really moving a lot uh, here in Paris you need to be uh, the, be- the better team or, or an original team, you know, with a, a significant history and because uh, um, uh, there is a lot of uh, to do every weekend here in Paris in sports and uh, in a, or in other occupations. So so you, you need to build something really special. But I think uh, it's um, growing up again uh, since the last two years. We had a difficult time uh, around the, the years of... Uh, uh, 20, 2017. I, I stopped in 2015 and maybe the two years after, not, not because of me, uh, but, uh, it, it stops. Um, and we had a, uh, d- difficult results and a difficult, uh, change uh, on, on the club, especially here in Paris. But it's, uh, really growing up again and improving since, uh, everywhere in France, especially, but as, um, even in Paris. And uh, I think we we are in a key point uh, with the World Cup. So I think it's gonna growing up again a lot. And and it what what is happening actually? Because we know that even before the beginning of the World Cup, we have a, a specific uh, engagement uh, again uh, for you, young, especially for young players and uh, young uh, girls too. And that's another good point. A lot of New Zealanders come to Europe and come to France to to play rugby. Um, what are the key ingredients for those who are successful there? What, what in particular makes a New Zealand player successful in France? Uh, it's hard to say. It's different, I think, when you're arriving in Paris, for example, uh, from another club like Brive or Toulon or Cass. It's different life, definitely. So you you have to to understand that and to being comfortable in that in that life, but uh, 
it's depending of what kind of player you, you are talking about. Uh, uh, you have, uh, I played with uh, several New Zealand uh, players. Uh, um, some of them was really uh, integrated and uh, easy to arrive in a big city as Paris. And for others, it was harder. So depend of the, the everyone's story, but uh, the, the 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 rugby the rugby culture uh, were still easy to adapt in here because you are you have you had until now the best formation uh, in the rugby players in general, not only in the rugby technical, you know, but be, but uh, with the global thinking of rugby and approach. So so it was something I really appreciate. And um, and we try to be inspired by the by that culture you had in New Zealand here in France. So uh, the connection is, uh, is still working, uh, but it maybe depends where where do you live. Um, for me especially, I love I, I love living in a massive big city, you know. But I know it's harder for when you grow up, for example, uh, in camp in. Uh, in different uh, environments, so so we we have, we have to to be aware of that and taking care of of, uh, of what you have around you. Uh, but uh, on the pitch, it was uh, still the same uh, the same game, and uh, it was easy. The integration was uh, really easy for all, all the New Zealand players who were coming here in Paris. And just uh, finally, you have the Olympic Games in Paris next year. How are preparations yeah. going for that? Uh, that's uh, another big issue, but uh, we are starting uh, uh, with the Rugby World Cup, and, and that's actually my main uh, uh, everyday occupation, if I can say. But uh, we are still working for for sure on the Olympic and Paralympic Games, uh, with uh, coming just in less than uh, than a year. So that's a massive things to organize, a uh, li- little bit bigger than the Rugby World Cup. But we will be ready. We have a new concept you know, here in Paris, uh, coming in the center of city, as we do with uh, Village Rugby. Uh, but uh, on, the, on the biggest side uh, for competition venue, and, uh, and uh, we'll, be, we'll have opening ceremonies uh, in the center of city too, outside of the stadium for the first time. And uh, we will we, we will really want to create a new kind of Olympic and Paralympic Games, you know, uh, with a lot of humility. But uh, we want to going out uh, of the classic competition uh, venue and uh, creating uh, something new in the story of the Olympics and Paralympics. So so we we're gonna see that after at the end of those. But uh, we will be ready uh, in less than a year. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio. Hi, ZB listener. You'll be pleased to hear that my podcast is coming out soon. Murray Deeker's Sporting Lives. We'll interview legends of sport, uncovering their stories. It'll be full of memories, theories, and opinion. And there won't be any nonsense in it. Murray Deeker's Sporting Lives, brought to you by Gold Sport. Listen and follow now on iHeartRadio. Or if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or any other audio app, then you can search and find me there as well.